Welcome back everyone. Following a tough game against Denver last night, you may have thought the Lakers come out a bit sluggish in this one. However, that did not end up being the case. They played pretty well during the first quarter, but then absolutely exploded during the second quarter, putting up nearly 50 points and pushing their first half total to 87 total points, nearly a new franchise record. And not to mention they did it while having an unexpected or maybe an expected visitor for Rob Palenka, with that being Spencer Dinwiddie, a guy they are heavily pursuing on the bio market. And well, if they are trying to convince him to join their team, then this was the type of game to do it with, and especially for Dinwiddie being an offensive minded player. Not only that though, but I imagine they saw a pretty clear opening within their rotation too. I mean, no offense to a guy like Skylar Mays, but I guarantee that Dinwiddie would be getting that playing time instead if he were a Laker right now. Simply put, they would really benefit from a backcourt player, and I would be willing to bet that Palenko is telling him that too. Now, he is reportedly choosing between the Lakers and Mavericks, but I think we can all agree this is a very good game for him to come to. Getting back to the game here though, I love what we got from the Lakers here tonight. Again, despite coming off a tough game last night, they came out with a ton of energy in this one, and especially on offense. And don't take that for granted either. I mean, we have seen before how they can tend to lack energy coming off a of back-to-back, -back, with that being particularly true during the first quarter. And yet, they were able to find a way to overcome that tonight. Believe it or not, their entire starting lineup had over 20 points each, with D'Angelo Russell leading the way with 30, really shutting up all the people that said he would quote-unquote fall off after not being traded at the trade deadline. I mean, hopefully he can keep it up, but the guy was absolutely on fire tonight. I truly have no idea how the guy is able to make some of the shots that he takes, pretty much taking and making the most difficult shots possible when he gets going. And like it or not, you saw what it did for their team tonight, nearly contributing to them putting up a new franchise record during the first half, and when D'Lo is cooking like that they are very difficult to beat, which I think the Pelicans would agree with too. I mean, they had a pretty good offensive game themselves, putting up 122 points on 52% shooting from the field and 38% from 3, and yet, they are simply not able to keep up. In my opinion, this may have been the best game we have seen from the Lakers on offense all year now, and that's saying something given the point totals they have put up so far, but I really think you can make that argument. I think their current starting lineup is going to have trouble defensively during certain matchups, but I think we can all agree that it's their best option offensively. Every single one of them can create their own shot, along with being able to score the ball from virtually anywhere on the court, and then create plays for their teammates too. And well, we saw what that can look like at its peak tonight. With all of that being said though, I'll let you hear from the Lakers about their game tonight. And after listening, let me know your thoughts about this game in the comments down below. Since it was starting to be tracked in the early 80s, what would you like about the offensive flow from the jump? Uh, we were in a great flow. I think um, the ball was popping. Obviously, D'Lo had it going. AR, I believe, started the game, I think, seven for seven or six for six. And, uh, you know, Rui was one of the best uh, offensive performances he had this year. You know, he was just reading the defense, cutting behind the defense, also making his outside shots. So, um, good performance for us offensively. You played with a variety of players throughout your career who can score in abundance and find that zone. What about D'Lo when he gets there makes him so unique? Um, I mean, when you have the ability to shoot the ball like that, you can always keep the defense at bay. You know, you they never know if you're going to shoot, if you're going to drive, whatever the case may be. And his uh, his range is um, um, is pretty uncanny. And it's only a few guys, obviously, in our league that can come down with the dribble, and, you know, and just race from anywhere. And he's one of those guys. And once he gets going, you know, he can run three or four of them um, in a streak together. I bet it's rare to see like kind of an open recruitment in season. We saw Spencer Dinwiddie with Rob during the game. Saw him back here afterwards. Um, he's a free agent. What do you think he could add to this team? Um, playmaking, another ball handler, another shot maker, another guy, um, another veteran. Um, anytime you can add a veteran, uh, that ability helps. Um, so we see what happens. Thanks, Elgin. Thanks, Ron. An offensive explosion in the first half, and you know, they cut it down to four in the second half. You're ultimately able to pull away. Shooting, I guess, is just contagious, right? When it's going in, it seems like everybody's feeling pretty good. Yeah, I mean, when you're playing the right way, um, you know, and you, seeing shots go in, it's a good feeling, and uh, you just shoot them a little more free. And it, hey! Yeah, uh, basketball's great, and it was a good offensive night. We can clean some things up defensively, but uh, this is a really good win. They've been playing good ball lately. 
That was Jackson Hayes flying by. Uh, he's had a couple of really good weeks of basketball, giving you guys a nice lift. And what have you seen from him? Yeah, I mean, like I said, in Boston, uh, for someone to go to go from uh, probably a month of DMPs to you know kind of just getting thrown out there randomly with some hurt, uh, some injuries and stuff like that. You know, he's been major, and that just speaks to who he is as a person. He's always in a good mood. Uh, he's a professional. He shows up to work every day. And, you know, we need him. Uh, his athleticism, the way he can, you know, be active at the rim, but uh, offensively as well, the way he plays the get game, uh, you know, he just plays the game the right way. So it just speaks to, you know, who he is as a person. D'Lo walks by. Uh, you had a really efficient offensive night, but since you won't talk about yourself, I'm going to ask you about him. How about those two stretches that he had? I think 14 points in about two and a half minutes and then eight points in like a minute. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if y'all been watching D'Lo since college, I think y'all know what he can do. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, how he can really help our team. Uh, skills. Skills not that, not lacking. Uh, he's got all that, um, and the way he shoots the ball, the way he plays with confidence. Uh, you know, you love to see it, and you know, it's someone that you know I really pull for personally, just because our friendship. Um, and it's just a, a beautiful thing to watch. The rare weekend off for you. Uh, let me guess, you're playing golf. Both days. <laughs> I ain't even watching the Super Bowl. I'm golfing. <laughs> I knew it. All right, Austin. Appreciate you just be on uptick for the last couple of weeks tonight obviously was a you know went beyond that what did you see that just led to that and how did it flow out of that first quarter just the ball movement um, we highlighted it uh, in our pregame film um, something we've been talking about a ton just you know passing on time on target well, I'll back up like the pace the spacing our running habits starting there getting good screens to create an advantage and then passing the ball, attacking downhill, making sure the ball touches the paint. And then once we get in the paint, pass on time on target. The defense usually tells you where the ball should go. And then just guys being shot, shot ready and shot aggressive. Russell kind of typified that. I think he had 14 points in about three minutes yeah. in the second quarter, and then he had eight more in a minute, or about a minute and seven seconds in the second half. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, he was not as consistent, not as reliable. Um, at any point in this stretch, did you or anyone from the team kind of reach out to him and, and let him know, like, it, what you're doing, like, we need moving forward? And, and when yesterday came and went, was, was that, do you think there was a peace of mind that he, he knew that he would have a, a part of this team moving forward? Yeah, man, you know, I, I think uh, a lot of times people will think you're full of ish. Um, when you're telling them we have enough in the locker room, we just need to get healthy and get whole. Um, the way he's been playing, you know, the way he started off the year, and you know, he hit a little tough patch. And every NBA player goes through that, especially when you're scoring in this league. You're going to hit a drought every now and again. But you know, to his credit, he kept working on his game, kept working through it. And uh, I know I've encouraged him, you know, to stay aggressive, be aggressive. Uh, way asking him ways I can help. You know, him orchestrate what's going on out there. You know, he's calling stuff. We're going play calling back and forth between Brian, him, myself, Phil Handy, AR. We're all just trying to make sure we stay organized. And, you know, I give him the freedom. He'll look at me, give me the thumbs up, you know, let me know he's got something or a play planned out already. If there's a dead ball, someone shooting a free throw. So just giving him that freedom and, and, and constantly myself, good staff, his teammates encouraging him to stay aggressive. Um, I think he's in a great place, and he's a worker. And so uh, the work he's putting in, I saw him just, you know, he didn't sulk. He didn't, you know, implode when he was struggling a little bit. You know, he just got in the gym before practice, after practice, before shoot around, after shoot around, just really working with Coach Michael Fraction, um, doing, putting in a lot of great work and, and, you know, asking all the right questions and film and whatnot. It's... You can see, you know, he just buckled down and started leaning back on his work and not, not felt sorry for himself.